Is there something interfering with your happiness or maybe something preventing you from achieving your goals? If so, many people can relate, self included. The good news is BetterHelp is here to, well, help. BetterHelp's mission is making professional therapy accessible, affordable, and convenient. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You'll connect in a safe and private online environment, and you can start communicating in under 48 hours. And what I love most about BetterHelp, it's more affordable than traditional offline counseling, and financial aid is available. I want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash ratchet. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash ratchet. How do you hide a love affair when you're two big names in Hollywood? True Love is a new scripted podcast from Wondery that brings you stories of scandal, romance, and drama. And in the new season, Abby and Eric are co-stars in a new blockbuster superhero franchise. The last thing either of their careers need is an on-set romance, but they just can't help themselves. Abby and Eric bond over a shared suspicion that the movie they're in isn't very good. Their affair starts with a shared laugh. Then they exchange secret glances on set. Soon, their on-screen love scenes spill over into real life. But when Nigel, another co-star, enters the picture, this Hollywood romance gets complicated fast and a very messy affair ensues. Each season of True Love is passionate, scandalous, and inspired by a real-life love story. I loved season one of True Love, and I'm super excited for season two. I just started listening, and I'm already on my toes. If you like a good love triangle, then season two is for you. Follow True Love on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or listen early and ad-free by joining Wondery Plus in the Wondery app. It's crazy how fast the prices of just about everything are rising. Gas, groceries, clothes, you name it. And all the experts are saying it's only going to get worse before it gets better. I've been looking at all the ways I can personally cut costs, ways to save where I can. I started with my auto insurance. I started with Gabby. Gabby uses your current policy to compare your current coverage with 40 of the top insurance providers like Progressive, Nationwide, and Travelers. They're the one true comparison platform with fast, verifiable quotes, not ballpark guesses. Gabby helped find me the right policy for my truck. I just logged in with my current insurance provider. They gave me a whole list of quotes, and I found out I could be saving about $60 a month on my auto insurance. It's not just me who loves Gabby. Gabby has been featured in TechCrunch, Forbes, and USA Today. Start saving on your auto insurance today. Go to Gabby.com slash Ratchet to start saving today. It's totally free. That's G-A-B-I dot com slash Ratchet. Gabby.com slash Ratchet. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and those who don't identify as either, you are all listening to Ratchet and Respectable with Demetria L. Lucas. Oh, I'm in an excellent mood today. Excellent. You want to know why? I cussed some people out. It made me feel so good. I, I feel released. I feel cleansed. I feel, I feel anew. I know some of y'all are thinking, Demetria, you can't walk around cursing people out. I can and did. I felt great about it. A lot of people are cursing people out. We'll get to that in a second. But I've been very honest about where I am. I've also been very honest about where my boundaries are. But a couple people this week, y'all slid into my DMs and tried it and tried it and got cursed the fuck out because of it. So if you hear tell... That Demetria Lucas has been running around cussing people out. It's true. I did it. I do it again. I I believe in the Jesus who flipped tables. When I curse people out, people gonna be like, Demetria, this is blasphemy. I genuinely do feel. I really do feel like I'm moving in the image of Christ in the temple. Some of y'all mofos, 
me to be cussed out. You do. You don't understand nice language. You only get it when you've been cursed out. And then you want to run and tell people, oh my gosh, she cursed me out. Yes. Yes, the fuck I did. And I feel great about it. There's a, there's a scene in my favorite show, one of my favorite shows, Snowfall and Succession are like neck and neck right now. In season one, could be season two, a Snowfall, Andre, the cop, Melly's dad, he finds out that Franklin is a drug dealer. He used to be a father figure to Franklin because he lived next door to him. He takes Franklin for a father-son talk. He tells Franklin, he says, Franklin, he's like, the things that you're doing, the selling of these drugs, it's killing your community. Like, do you understand what you're doing? And Franklin's like, yeah, I do. And he said, well, how are you sleeping at night, son? Like, knowing that you're causing all this chaos. And Franklin says, I sleep like a baby. I, that's how I feel when I curse people out. I really feel great about it. You know who else I think sleeps like a baby when they curse people out? LeVar Burton. Yes, LeVar Burton, reading Rainbow LeVar Burton, is doing a different kind of reading on the internet these days. I guess this goes under good black news. I laughed when I read it. It brought me joy, so I think it's good. But you know the saga of LeVar Burton and Jeopardy. Like, he wanted to be the new host for Jeopardy. His fans wanted him to be the new host of Jeopardy. Jeopardy brought him on, him and a bunch of other brown people that they auditioned. But then they picked the white guy who was a bigot, and then he had to step down from the hosting. And then he got fired from the executive producing. And as of this moment, Jeopardy is currently looking for a host for this show. Which brings us up to speed. LeVar Burton recently went on The Trevor, The Daily Show with Trevor Noah. He went to talk to Trevor about this Jeopardy fiasco. And he said that he very much at one point wanted to be the host of Jeopardy. But he said after all the things that have gone on, including... Some higher up at Jeopardy saying that, you know, LeVar Burton was never a serious consideration. Really? Really? I, well, we talked about that on a previous episode. I won't rehash it. But LeVar Burton has been very above board about this whole process. And when he went on Trevor Noah, he said that he really wanted the Jeopardy thing, but he, was, he didn't get it, which he's fine with. But he said all these other opportunities that are even bigger then Jeopardy have been coming his way because his name has been out there and the powers that be have seen how much people really like LeVar Burton and how the audience is clamoring for him to have a show. Like we want to see him and we want to support him. So he says all these other great things are coming his way. So he says to Trevor Noah, quote, they say be careful of what you wish for because what I found out is that it wasn't the thing that I wanted after all. Okay, so LeVar Burton says flatly he doesn't want the Jeopardy position anymore. He's got other things on the table that he's looking at. Okay, so this journalist, and usually I side with journalists. I see where they're coming from. This journalist sees this, this interview and he tweets from his official account. He says, please, if offered, LeVar Burton would take it, it being the Jeopardy job, in a minute. LeVar Burton sees the tweet. He says, no, I wouldn't. And the guy responds to LeVar Burton. He says, I believe you. I hope you land something very, very big soon. Sorry, everybody. A lot of people have been responding to this guy. He totally didn't expect to get a response from LeVar Burton. People kept responding to him. So the guy says, he's trying to get people off his back. He says, it was an opinion. I apologize to him and his fans. So let's move on, okay? LeVar Burton wasn't ready to move on. He said, no, Stephen, you don't get a pass. You made erroneous assumptions about me and made them public. Throughout this entire ordeal, I have done my utmost to take the high road in spite of the amount of vitriol and vile comments some folks have felt it necessary to post on my timeline. I have a perspective on this entire Jeopardy saga, which I intend to share at a time of my choosing, probably my memoirs. As a journalist, I hope you can appreciate that any and all speculation about my motives or intentions is simply uninformed. The journalist responded to LeVar. He said, I understand, and I should have realized you were subjected to some ugly stuff. I certainly did not intend to do that. Burton responded to him, peace. So a fan saw this whole exchange and retweeted it. With the caption, you never know when the person you're tweeting about is paying attention. Burton quoted the tweet and said, sometimes we fuck around and find out. Have you ever heard of LeVar Burton cursing before? I haven't. 
This man has been famous longer than I've been alive. I have never heard any scandal, any um, inflammatory language. I've never heard anything of this nature from LeVar Burton. Do you understand how far you have to push for a man like LeVar Burton to respond? Sometimes we fuck around and find out. Look, stop playing with people. Mercury, is it in retrograde now or is it about to go in retrograde? If it's not already there, I think it started early because there's been a lot of communication issues. We're going to talk about some of it. Joyner Lucas, no relation. Uh, that's another fuck around and find out. The peace and blessings to LeVar Burton. That man done upset the LeVar. Upset the LeVar. I don't want LeVar Burton to be upset. LeVar Burton should never be upset. He's brought so much joy to our lives. I want him to have a wonderful, peaceful life. Which I believe he is. I think he just had enough that day. Because if he had a bad life, he wouldn't look how he does. LeVar Burton is a zaddy snack. Have you seen LeVar Burton? I mean, yes, because you watch Jeopardy. He looks wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. But don't play with him. You think because he's like nerdy, he reads, he likes Jeopardy. Like, no, 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 no. Try him if you want to. Fuck around and find out. Oh, dear. What else is on our list of things to talk about? There's so much. The Emmys were terrible. I was so excited for the Emmys. Last week's episode, I literally went through like almost every category that was up for nomination for the Emmys on Sunday. And I was really excited because I was like, there's a whole bunch of black and brown people that are nominated. Like this should be a very interesting, colorful Emmys. And it was in appearance. There was tons of black and brown people on the red carpet. There were tons of black and brown people on the stage. Cedric the Entertainer was the host. I want to know who wrote his jokes because they weren't funny. And Cedric the Entertainer is funny in general. He's got old black uncle humor. Like, that's just naturally funny. But I, I, I barely chuckled. I like the opening number, which paid tribute to Biz Markie. TV, you got what I need. I like that Debbie Allen was honored. But in general, like, the Emmys were just like, mm, yeah. So tons of black people nominated, but for all the major categories, at least for acting, no black person won. Tons of black and brown presenters, not nary a black win though. Not for acting. Michaela Cole won for best writing for uh, I May Destroy You, which I was really, really excited about because she got snubbed at some other award shows. So she did get her Emmy here, which was well-deserved. And her speech was for the writers. You know, she was like, people, you know, think that being present equals success. And she was like, no, go somewhere and write. Variety, Deadline, a couple other places noticed the whiteness of the Emmys. People were starting to use the hashtag Emmy so white on Twitter. If you remember a few years ago, it was Oscar so white because everybody was like, where where are the black people? More or less, the wins went to the crown, which is amazing. I love the crown and Ted Lasso, which I was like. I don't even know what channel Ted Lasso comes on. I don't know anyone who's watching Ted Lasso. Are you watching Ted Lasso? And if so, is it any good? I think it's important to note that specifically we're talking about the 12 main acting categories. Because like I did say, Michaela Cole did win. RuPaul did win. It was for best uh, competition series. RuPaul has like the most Emmys of a black person ever, which I was like, really? Who knew? I guess RuPaul knew, but still. I was really disappointed. You nominated all these black people and you got all these black people to present so that, you know, a black audience would tune in for this show and get your ratings up. But when it comes to actually awarding black people, not so much or at all. This is worth noting. We talked last week about how Courtney B. Vance won an Emmy, but his Emmy was a creative arts Emmy. Which this is something I wasn't familiar with. There are actually three different sets of Emmys. There's the Emmys that we all watched on Sunday night. And then there's a creative arts Emmy. And then there's another Emmy for like the behind the scenes people. So Courtney B. Vance won a creative arts Emmy. It's not the kind of Emmy that we think of when we think of the Emmys. Um, and Lovecraft Country it was nominated for 18 Emmys. It won two. So one of them went to Courtney B. Vance. And I think the other one was for sound, I think. The other 16, nada. I really don't know what to say other than like uh, how, how predictable, how very America. You know, 2020, it was all like 
Black Lives Matter and down with racism and let's go not just say words, but like, let's go go to the streets and, and march and protest because the treatment of black people in this country is wrong. And all the corporations were behind it. And, you know, it's a really big thing. And I guess people just got bored with it because now it's back to business as usual. I mean, I hear you on like the, the hashtags, like the Emmy so white, and I feel people's disappointment and all of that. But I also just feel like this is why it's so important for black folks to support black award shows. I think it's important for black celebs to show up for black award shows. Because I think sometimes too often and we put too much clout on the Oscars and the Emmys and they're seen as like the end all of be all. But I feel like if you're waiting for mainstream white places to recognize our talent consistently because it's the right thing to do and not just because it's the cool thing to do, it's trendy for the moment. I feel like we put too much faith there and so often we end up disappointed. Is there something interfering with your happiness or maybe something preventing you from achieving your goals? If so, many people can relate, self included. The good news is BetterHelp is here to, well, help. BetterHelp's mission is making professional therapy accessible, affordable, and convenient. So anyone who struggles with life's challenges can get help anytime and anywhere. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You'll connect in a safe and private online environment, and you can start communicating in under 48 hours. Now, to be clear, BetterHelp is not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is professional counseling done securely online. And what I love most about BetterHelp, it's more affordable than traditional offline counseling. And financial aid is available. I want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash ratchet. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash ratchet. Whether it's taking a walk around your neighborhood, running errands, or venturing out on your own, you always want to feel safe. With Birdie, you can keep doing what you love with added peace of mind. Birdie is a personal safety alarm designed to be easy to carry and simple to use. When you activate your Birdie with a quick pull, the alarm will emit a loud 130 decibel siren and flashing strobe light to help deter an attack. Now, my favorite thing about Birdie is that unlike pepper spray or other deterrents, Birdie is no danger to you. Feel confident to use it without the worry. Over 300,000 Birdie alarms have been sold and they have thousands of five-star reviews. Join the flock today for a safer tomorrow. Right now, She's Birdie is offering our listeners 15% off your first purchase when you go to she'sbirdie.com slash ratchet. Go to She's Birdie, spelled S-H-E-S-B-I-R-D-I-E dot com slash ratchet for 15% off your first purchase. That's she'sbirdie.com slash ratchet. In undisappointing news, The Real is back for season eight. They started off season eight with a bang. Out the gate, host Jeannie was like, I'm so excited to tell you this. We've been keeping this secret for months. I'm five months pregnant with Jeezy's baby. (laughs) Jeannie and Jeezy got married. I know they got married during the pandemic. I want to say in the backyard of their house in Atlanta. Her dress was so, so beautiful. I know we talked about it at the time. I think Jeezy wore, did he wear a rosé suit to his wedding? I remember loving his suit and loving her dress. I thought both were like amazing. She put up this beautiful pregnancy photo of them. I don't know if she's in Santorini, but she's got on a Santorini dress. It's royal blue. There's one image where she's just by herself and she's holding her belly and like the dress is billowing behind her. And then there's another one where Jeezy's like kneeling in front of her, kissing her bump. And she's leaned over, kissing his head and holding his hand. It's such a beautiful, beautiful image. And it's so intimate. I'm really happy for them. And part of the reason this this is such news that Jeannie is pregnant, 
she was married for about 10 years and she and her husband divorced because she adamantly did not want children. And she talked about it on the show very many times. And she said, I've never wanted children. I've been adamantly against having children. I've gone out of my way to make sure I don't get pregnant and have children. Like, this is just not the thing that I want for myself. So they got divorced. If I recall correctly, before their divorce was final, her husband had met someone else. I think he'd gotten the new woman pregnant. But she announced on The Real earlier today, and I'm taping on Monday night. It's 9.08 p.m. She said it feels surreal making the announcement in the same home, referring to the set of The Real, in the same home that I said so many defiant things. You know, I was like, I know exactly what I want. I know exactly what kind of woman I want to be. And I always said I'd never be a mom. And there's so many reasons now that are coming to fruition as to why I would have said that then. But I do know now that you never say never and that love can really change you. Also, this is a very intentional choice. She said that she and Jeezy needed some assistance with getting pregnant. They did use fertility treatments in order to get pregnant. So like she decided like, you know, she wanted this baby with her husband, which good for her. I saw some people, men who were like, she wasted her previous husband's time. She was married to him for 10 years and she didn't want to have kids with him. And I was like, well, yeah, she meant it when she said it and she meant it with him. Like she, she said, I didn't want to be a mom and she didn't. And then she was with somebody new and she decided that this was a better situation. So she changed her mind, which she's entitled to do. This makes entirely logical sense to me. I think different people can bring out different aspects of you, different desires for you. Clearly, clearly, because she was like, no to the ex-husband. And, you know, with the new husband, she was like, all right, I'm going to go do fertility treatments because I really want your baby. So She looked happy as fuck. So that's all I ask for people. Oh, she did say this. She says, um, falling in love with Jeezy made me see life differently for myself. Our love is honest, pure, and safe. Something I hadn't felt as a child. She added that she said, um, being a mom is hands down the hardest role in the entire world. Now that we're bringing another Jenkins, Jeezy's last name into the picture, I have no idea what to expect. She also said of Jeezy, he's an amazing dad and it overwhelms me with even more love. Yo, she is in it. I'm genuinely, genuinely happy for her. I've said forever that I don't really want kids. I can't even like picture it though. Oh, also on the real, because they wanted to open season eight with a bang, which by the way, no one told me Tamara Mowry was gone from the real. Not that I really like watched the real like that. I really only watched it when Amanda was on it, but I was watching clips from it today and I was like, something's missing. Someone's missing. Who's missing? It took me like the whole damn show to be like, Tamara. Where's Tamara? She left to, you know, pursue other opportunities. She'd been there for seven seasons, which I was like, that's a long time to stay at the same job. Like, I get it. But I was like, but Tamara, they were fine without her. And, and that's no shade whatsoever. But they, it was a good episode today. But their guest star for the opening of the season, like you bring it with a bang, was Lori Harvey. If you never heard Lori Harvey speak before, because you know I love to quote Lori Harvey, but I only have one word to quote. Why? But yes, Lori Harvey was on The View today and she spoke in full and complete sentences. She's delightful. She's quick-witted. She's funny. She's engaging. She was a joy to see. And I was like, more words, please. And in case you ever thought I was exaggerating about how nobody knew what Lori Harvey's voice sounded like, Lonnie said it too. She was like, I'm just listening to you talk. And she was like, I don't think I've heard your voice before. It's not just me. She was on there to talk about her new skincare line, which I was like, I would totally buy skincare from Lori Harvey because her skin is amazing. She talked about Michael B. Jordan. Apparently he is like the best boyfriend ever. He goes on lunch dates with Marjorie. He's very romantic, which we knew, but she said he also listens. He gets the small details. So she says like offhandedly, she mentioned one time that she would like to go to a farmer's market and he called her up over the weekend and was like, hey, what you doing? I'm on my way. And so she was like, um, okay. And they went to a farmer's market. He listens and executes. And I was like, aww. Do you know how hard to come by that is? 
Now Lori has confirmed that yes, yes, he really is that amazing. It's not just for, you know, pictures and TV, which is great. I want black women, I want all black women to be loved the way that they need and want and desire to be loved. She didn't say he speaks her love language, but what she described was a man who knows how to speak her love language. And I was like, I want that for every woman. And you know, like a guy who, I don't know, not who looks like Michael B. Jordan, because I understand that's not everyone's taste, but a, an attraction to the man you're with that matches the one that I feel when I see Michael B. Jordan. So I want you to have that, that oomph of a spark whenever you see your partner. Whoever your partner is. If your partner's a man, great. If your partner's not a man, that's great too. But I want you to have a, that uh when you see your person. That's what I wish for everyone. But it was really, really crazy to see, because um, I have watched like the real before, and they don't always um, fan out over guests, but like the four of them sat there and completely fanned out over Lori Harvey. And I was like, this is amazing. I know Lori Harvey's big, but I don't think I realized until I watched other people respond to her how big she is. Her segment was like eight minutes long, which is long for a TV segment interview. Um, what else is going on? We talked about the Emmys. We talked about cursing LeVar Burton. Talked about Jeannie and Jeezy. We didn't talk about Tarana Burke's new book. When Tarana Burke's new book came out last Tuesday, congratulations to Tarana Burke. Her new book is Unbound. It's her memoir. She's going to come on the show and she's going to talk to us about her new book. I haven't had a chance to read it yet. She sent me a copy of the book. You know, Tarana and I have been friends for like 10 years. And I know some of the things that she's going to talk about. We've, we've talked offline about some of her feelings around her press tour. So I'm kind of nervous as a friend to read some of the intimate and unfortunate stories, experiences, living. It's not just a story, it's a life that has happened to someone that I care very deeply about. I have a bit of trepidation around reading the book. I'm going to read it before we do the interview. I'm just, I'm nervous about the read. I was flipping through the book over the weekend and I read the acknowledgements. I do that with everybody's book, but she mentioned me in the acknowledgements and I was just completely humbled and floored and thankful. Sometimes you just don't really know like what you mean to people until they like, you know, just say it. And I just, I was really genuinely touched by that. One of my friends said that to me today. She asked me to do something and I was like, I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can. I was like, I'll see what I can do. And then I was able to do it. And I hit her up today and I was like, yeah, I'll be able to make it. And so she was like, perfect. And then she wrote me back like a, maybe a couple hours later. And she was like, I just want you to know like how much it means to me for you to remember and to come through for me in this way. And I was like, really? Because I all along I wanted to do it. It wasn't a matter of like a, a desire to, it was a matter of like, you know, can I just given, you know, the things that are going on in my life or whatever. And so she was like, no, I get it. And she was like, but it's just that, you know, that you, that you figured it out and it like, you're doing it. She's like, I just want you to know that I don't take it for granted. And like, I really appreciate it. And I was like, Jesus Christ. Sometimes you just do really small things for people or people do really small things for you. And you have no idea, um, the impact that a small act can have on somebody else's life. Someday I'll like explain why it meant so much for, for Tarana to mention me, but not today. But there's a whole backstory with that that really has nothing to do with her. It has to do with like some other things, but it really just, I appreciated it. That's all. Making content is an essential part of what I do to keep this show going, but it hasn't always been a seamless creative process. Fun fact. I'm good at writing. I'm good at speaking. I'm not so great at designing. That's something I always used to outsource. But ever since I found Canva Pro, I can design anything like a pro and on any device. Canva Pro is a design platform that empowers you to create and share stunning content in just a few clicks. Designing with Canva Pro is amazingly fast and fun. Choose from thousands of templates that are easy to customize or start from scratch. Canva Pro has endless premium fonts, photos, videos, and so much more that add personality and edge to whatever you're designing. Their extensive library of tools means virtually endless options when it comes to creativity. Designing together has never been easier. Sharing, editing, and commenting in real time. Canva Pro helps you stay organized on the same page and on top of team projects. So no more misplaced files or tedious back and forth. 
Plus, you and four teammates can unlock everything Canva Pro has to offer for just $12.99 a month. With Canva Pro's content planner, you'll save time planning, creating, and posting social media content too. Pause scheduled posts and edit them anytime. My favorite Canva Pro feature is the storage. Of course, I never have to go looking for the latest file. Design like a pro with Canva Pro. Right now, you can get a free 45-day extended trial when you use my promo code. Just go to canva.me slash ratchet to get your free 45-day extended trial. That's C-A-N-V-A dot M-E slash ratchet. Canva.me slash ratchet. It's crazy how fast the prices of just about everything are rising. Gas, groceries, clothes, you name it. And all the experts are saying it's only going to get worse before it gets better. I've been looking at all the ways I can personally cut costs, ways to save where I can. I started with my auto insurance. I started with Gabby. Shopping for auto insurance sucks. I get it. So does Gabby. That's why they do all the work for you. Things that would take days or weeks, Gabby does in minutes. Gabby uses your current policy to compare your current coverage with 40 of the top insurance providers like Progressive, Nationwide, and Travelers. They're the one true comparison platform with fast, verifiable quotes, not ballpark guesses. And because Gabby uses your current coverage, they only show policies that are the same or better than your current coverage, many of them at a lower price. And Gabby is free to use and they never sell your info. So no annoying spam or robocalls. Gabby helped find me the right policy for my truck. I just logged in with my current insurance provider. They gave me a whole list of quotes and I found out I could be saving about $60 a month on my auto insurance. People who switch with Gabby save on average $80 a month versus their current policy. $80. It's not just me who loves Gabby. Gabby has been featured in TechCrunch, Forbes, and USA Today. Start saving on your auto insurance today. Go to Gabby.com slash Ratchet to start saving today. It's totally free. That's G-A-B-I dot com slash Ratchet. Gabby.com slash Ratchet. CBD can do so much to support wellness, but not all CBD is created equal. So many companies lack transparency, not to mention some products just aren't enjoyable to use. That's why I recommend Onyx and Rose, the premium CBD company that I can trust, and it's the highlight of my daily routine. Onyx and Rose has amazing CBD oils, balms, and gummies that can aid in stress and joint pain. Plus, they have an incredible skincare line that can help reduce the signs of aging, soothe stressed out skin, and more. All Onyx and Rose products are non-psychoactive, so you can experience the therapeutic benefits of CBD without the side effects. I cannot get enough of the overnighted sleeping mask. It's so luxurious, and when I wake up, my skin is so smooth. I also love the Start Fresh Cleanser. It's so gentle on my skin and it's got so much good stuff in it. It really works to balance my complexion. Trust me, Onyx and Rose will be your new favorite CBD brand. I have an awesome deal to get you started. 20% off your first purchase. Just go to my special URL, onyxandrose.com slash ratchet and use promo code ratchet. Don't miss out on 20% off. Use promo code RATCHET only at O-N-Y-X and Rose.com slash RATCHET. So last but not least, let's start at the beginning of this story, or actually kind of the middle. Let's start with Joyner Lucas. Again, no relation. Although, at some point on Saturday when everybody was talking about Joyner Lucas and his extraordinary pettiness, and his ability to hold a grudge for what he said, six years. I was like, is he a cancer? That whole, like you crossed me and I'll sit around for years and wait for the right moment to strike just to give it maximum impact. That's some shit I do. Just waiting for the right opportunity. Patient. It's not something I think about every day. I don't walk around with malice in my heart. I'm not consumed with rage or grief or anger or anything like that. I just, you know, 
My memory works. I was like, that must be some cancer shit. But then I looked it up. He's actually a Leo. And then I was like, well, shit, maybe we could be related. Because that's some shit that runs in my family. My dad does it too. Like he'll hold a grudge too and we'll sit on it for years. Waiting. Waiting. I ain't saying it's the right thing to do. I'm just telling you it's the thing that I do. I'm not saying try it at home. You know what? I'm starting this with Joyner Lucas. But then we're going to have to go back before Joyner Lucas. Because actually... It's a black woman, Jessie Wu, who set this whole thing off. But Joyner Lucas is the one who sent it out the goddamn gate. So Joyner Lucas woke up on Saturday morning and chose violence. In a series of posts on his Instagram page, of which I believe he has 2.6 million followers. Actually, I believe he did this on Twitter, and then he brought it over to Instagram. That's what he did. Okay. So he posted... My son was on the way and you stole $60,000 from me before I got in the game, Karen Civil. I hired you as a consultant and below attached was the memo you sent me. I was desperate for help and you knew that. After you were paid, you went ghost. So he included the deal memo that was sent over from Karen Civil to him. It has a list of, of things that she was supposed to help him do. Scope of work. Content and marketing initiatives included, but are not limited to blog placements for song releases, development and delivery of digital short creation story, facilitate interviews with media publications, build fan engagement, articulated social content capturing, red carpet event opportunities, iTunes beats, music promotions. I do remember at one point Karen Civil was working with beats, radio interviews, help acquire booking agent show openings. So she sent over this deal memo. It was an agreement for a period of six months in which Joyner Lucas would pay her 55,000 American USD dollars and dineros. Joyner Lucas continued. He said, after you got the money paid up front, you stopped answering my calls. And every time I hit you, you answered the phone with an attitude like I was messing up your day. I sent you hella messages pleading with you to do your job because my back was against the wall. You took advantage. At this time, I was afraid to speak up for myself because I didn't want to get blackballed. I had no idea how this industry shit works and I ain't want you to drag my name through the mud. So out of fear, I stayed silent. He notes, until Mr. Cameron spoke up a few years ago on Twitter and then I did. If you do recall... Many years ago, I guess maybe like three, Cameron accused Karen Civil of stealing from him. I mean, I remember the story, but it kind of went nowhere. I guess Cameron just wasn't in good black standing at the time. Cameron's kind of considered a grimy nigga. I'm not saying he is. I'm saying that's the perception of it. And I think people thought that like, well, you know, maybe it's get back for some of the grime you've done in your life. Like, you know, people just weren't, people didn't really make a fuss about this kind of story back then. So when Cameron said something a few years ago, Joyner Lucas says he spoke up then. And he said, after I spoke up, you had your peoples hit me directly and you tried to threaten me and then tried to make me write this fake ass apology and make myself look crazy to the public eye. He attached screenshots of the text in which Karen is giving his manager a script of which she wants Joyner Lucas to post. The gist of it is she wanted him to say my tweets We're out of line. Karen didn't steal money. It was wrong of me to inject myself in the middle of any issues someone else may have. I apologize for any harm my tweets may have caused. It wasn't my intention to attack her integrity. I simply got carried away and it was a misunderstanding. Jordan continues, I was broke and down to my last leg. That 60,000 was literally my last effort to help me get on and you stole that from me when my son was born. The media protects you, but wrong is wrong. At this time, I had like 5,000 followers. He says, I'll never forget the day you went on vacation with my money and then picked up the phone when I called you because you went ghost and you flat out told me, stop calling me, I'm on vacation. You know how long I've been waiting to do this? I've been hating you for many years, bruh. That there may have been some back channel conversation before Joyner Lucas went public. Because once he did, Karen Silva responded. I believe this was on her Instagram and Joyner Lucas reposted it. Karen says that he, as in Joyner Lucas, 
and I both had separate conversations with Charlemagne this morning where he passed on his phone number, where Charlemagne passed on Joyner Lucas's phone number so that we, Karen and Joyner, can have a conversation directly, but instead he, Joyner, took it to social. She adds, nothing was stolen or taken from you. Unfortunately, certain artists are under the impression that they have 24-7 access to you. All work done on his, Joyner Lucas, on his behalf, were filled for full transparency. She goes on to list that subtractor invoices were made and sent, and she says they also have those records. She also says that three years ago, that when Joyner Lucas made these same accusations, which I didn't know who Joyner Lucas was three years ago. I didn't know who he was until, until he made a video honoring Will Smith. And then Will Smith saw it and then hopped on the remix. That's when I figured out who Joyner Lucas was. So sometime late last year, Karen says that she and Joyner Lucas's manager hopped on a call back then. She says that he is lying about money taken from him. And she says that she recorded the call for future circumstances like this. Ooh, this is a mess. So Joyner Lucas responds to her again, acknowledging the conversation with Charlemagne and that he said that, that Charlemagne could give Karen his number. And he says, quote, why? Because I wanted you to call me so I can tell you what a little scummy fraud ass, dusty little snake ass, slime ball, greasy crab you are, but you took too long to call. And in that time, I kept thinking about that vacation you took with my money. So now you got to deal with this side of me. Deal with it. Oh, dear. So again, to be clear, so I just want to make sure I cover my bases because Karen sued somebody else. I just want to be clear that Karen has said that she fulfilled the duties of the contract, that she did not take that man's money and bounce. Clearly, Joyner Lucas believes otherwise. This, I can't say revelation because Joyner Lucas talked about it three years ago, but this um, return to this conversation comes on the heels of Jessie Wu, who I knew her name. I didn't know what she did. She's an actress. She's a singer. I'm looking at her page right now. She identifies herself as a jokester. I'll take that to mean comedian as well. One of my friends DM'd me something the other day. It was a legal document, and I didn't understand what was going on. I still fully don't, because the conversation with Jesse Wu has not been discussed in as much detail as Joyner Lucas. And even reading the caption on her page, this is what Jesse Wu had to say. She said, earlier this year, Karen Civil fake booked me using a non-existent company in order to obtain personal information. She served me with an extortion case for the sum of $3 million at this fake booking and had it recorded in order to pass the video around the industry with the goal to embarrass and intimidate me. Today, ahead of our hearing, the Superior Court of California sided with me. She thanks her attorneys. She says, I stand by the court's decision and I look forward for my check being cut by Miss Uncivil. She's referring to Karen paying for her legal fees. I don't fully understand exactly what, what is happening here. I see this document which from the Superior Court of California, County of Los Angeles. I see Karen Civil versus Jesse Wu. I see the case number. This looks like a legitimate document. It said defendant Jesse Wu's special motion to strike the complaint of plaintiff Karen Civil is granted. So Karen Civil sued her for something. From my understanding, the court is agreeing that the case should be thrown out. And they're granting Jesse Wu the right to move forward with getting her attorney fees and costs covered by Karen Civil, who sued her. I'm still not clear on what Karen Civil sued her over. My understanding from listening to other people talk about this is that Jesse had posted several documents. And again, my understanding, I didn't see them for myself, but then Jesse's lawyer had her take them down because this court case is not fully resolved yet. She's not accusing Karen Civil of fraud. I'm not exactly sure what she's accusing Karen Civil of, but it got enough attention that people were talking about like Karen Civil and, you know, is she on the up and up? And then Joyner Lucas, he'd been waiting, I guess, three years, six years since it happened, but three years since the last time he tried to strike, but he's a little more popular this time. 
And so this time, because timing is everything, he spoke up. And to say it went viral was an understatement. I read that Karen's name was trending number three on Twitter. I briefly mentioned it on my Facebook page, and I was actually talking about something else. And I was actually talking about something else that had more so to do with um, the rooms about her on Clubhouse. And but a lot of people were asking me, they were like, well, who, who is Karen Civil? What does she do? And that's always been like the million dollar question in the industry. It's like, what does Karen Civil do? I, I never knew, literally, until I saw the document that Joyner Lucas put up. I had no idea. I've followed her on Instagram for years. I've always seen pictures of her with like a lot of rappers. I knew she had worked on a Beats campaign at one point, but literally that was the only thing that I knew. But it's always been like a million dollar question. Like, what does Karen Civil do? I thought I was just out of the loop until like I saw everyone else asking the same question this weekend. And I was just like, oh shit, I thought it was just me. For people who are asking like, what does she do? No one's really clear on that. Marketing, that's the clearest answer that I've received. And I'm not really sure like what that, consist of so on clubhouse over the weekend there were like a million different rooms one of them had like eight thousand people in it you couldn't even get into the room it was so many people my friend sent me a link to listen in on the discussion via youtube so i was like cleaning my house and i'm listening to this whole clubhouse discussion about her and this is like a bunch of people who are industry insiders i cleaned my house from top to bottom like i mean i did the windows and everything so this clubhouse room went on forever and then continued the following day so a couple things about the discussion about karen civil sitting in this clubhouse room and people are discussing these allegations and there is two major train of trains of thought one of them is she did that and it's grimy and i can't believe she did that shit if you take the assignment and you take the cash, then you do the work. It's just that simple. And then there was the other side of people, and I would literally say it was like split 50-50. People were like, yo, it's the music industry. It's grimy. Everybody knows it's grimy. It's a cash industry. Lots of money is exchanged off the books. People are talking about like driving 600000 in cash from one state to the other to pay a DJ to play some songs. And I was like, one, that sounds like payola. And two, is that reported income? Are y'all really sitting up here talking about this shit in a room full of 8,000 people? Because I was like, yo, this sounds like some shit the IRS will be very interested to hear. Shut the fuck up. Payola comes with federal charges, yeah? I was like, ooh, is this, are these things you want to be confessing? Maybe y'all don't know that this room that y'all that y'all think are you're just talking to 8,000 people, which that's a public fucking forum. That's not a private room anymore. But like... Did y'all not know that this was airing on like a bunch of different YouTube networks at the same time? The live stream I was listening to on YouTube had like a good 4,000 people on it. So I was like, y'all confessing to all sorts of criminal shit. Like, yeah, he caught a lick. And I was like, what y'all are calling caught a lick in street terms? It's called stealing in legal terms. Young, green, it happens to everybody. Everybody gets got, it's part of the business. It may be. But you were getting up in a public forum, confessing to it with your government name and your profile? It's not wise, friends. It's not wise. It was a lot of confessions. And I was like, people, people, where are the lawyers? There were other confessions too. Karen did come into this very large platform that had, again, like 8,000 people. She came in to, to defend herself. I can't remember the name of the thread, but it was something entirely disrespectful. Karen Civil been a fraud. I tried to tell y'all. But Karen came in. She said that she's not, that she's, you know, she has not done what she's been accused of. And she said that, you know, she sent over her list of, I guess, deliverables would be, would be the way that it's called. Um, she said, that, you know, she keeps all her files and records and she has, you know, phone conversations and, and that she sent all of these things to Joyner Lucas's manager. So she was like, you know, I have records and receipts and, you know, I'll deal with this on, on, you know, the appropriate channels directly with the person that, you know, is saying these things because this playing out in a public forum is not working for me, which I was like, sis, your back is against the wall right now. Drop that shit. Screenshot that shit. You got your old emails? Put up that shit. Because multiple people saying that you've done the same thing to them for the same amount, no less, over years. It's looking like you did that shit that they're accusing you of. Now, maybe since that time, you know, maybe you was in a grimy phase of your life, like many people on Clubhouse who worked in the music industry, you know, they were talking about they caught a lick. They were talking about all the illegal shit that they did. Maybe you was in a grimy season of your life. 
Maybe you turned it around since then. Maybe you're living on the up and up. You've gone legit. It's the American way, kind of. People do grimy shit, the Kennedys. You flip that shit into legit shit. Kennedy became president. Maybe you've changed your ways. Or not. I don't know. I think if you got receipts that can clear your name, sis, what you waiting on? You looking a little crazy out here right now. Looking a little crazy out here right now. And again, I'm not in the music industry. I don't follow these circles very closely. But in addition to everything else, apparently she's been accused of hacking the website for Hollywood Unlocked. And she had denied doing so for years. And then I, she got into this room on Clubhouse. And for whatever reason, she decided to confess to actually hacking the website. It's, that's a crime. Is it not? Is it not? I was like, no one had anything on you. No one had proof of that shit. Why the fuck would you confess it in a room full of 8,000 people? And then the guy from Hollywood Unlocked, Jason Lee. Which, look, much love and respect to Jason Lee. I don't want Jason Lee coming after me for any of my tea. Don't come for me, Jason. I ain't said shit about you, bruh. Not a goddamn word. But she got in there and she made that confession. And Jason was like, oh, by all means, absolutely. I do intend to press charges. She hacked my goddamn site. She cost me money. She was mad that I posted stories she didn't like. And then I refused to take them down. Come to find out their, their history goes further than that. They used to live in the same building. They used to be friends at one point. And then, it, you know, things went sour and here we are. And I guess people said to Jason, like, Jason, don't you think you're doing the most right now? Like, you know, you're pressing charges. Like she admitted to it. Your site is flourishing. She's in a crisis right now. Like, do you really have to press charges? This is what Jason posted on his Instagram. This is the last post he put up. He said, sometimes you have to kill a fly with a sledgehammer. And it's not just about that fly. It's about the other flies watching. Now, there are people who might say, Jason, Jason, let this go. Let this go. I'm not one of them. If you hacked my site and had my shit taken down, I would pull a joint of Lucas on your ass. Like I would sit and wait and plot. I believe that's what Jason may have done as well. He was waiting. The time has come. He's pulled out a sledgehammer. It's not looking very pretty. I'm also going to say this, sis, get a lawyer. Get a lawyer and, and stop talking. That's my best advice to you. You know what my favorite line is? Shutting the fuck up is free. Shutting the fuck up is free. And this is one of those situations where unless she's dropping receipts that refute what she's being accused of, being like, yes, you gave me this money and here's what I delivered for you. I did this, 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 I did this. I reached out to this person, here's this email. You know what, you just weren't big enough and they weren't interested, but I did my job in reaching out. If unless you're dropping receipts, like you, you can't win this war. So you might as well just shut the fuck up. Go on vacation again. Don't put it on the internet. Just go, just leave and go. Turn the phone off, put it in airplane mode, just leave and go. You cannot fight the internet. You, you just got to take the L. If you don't have the receipts to prove yourself, to prove what you're saying, then you're going to be defeated by the internet. It just, it just, that's the way it goes. I don't wish nobody nothing. I, I, I hope justice prevails. That's what I hope. Whatever, whatever that is. I hope justice prevails. That's it. That's all I got. So. That is our episode for this week. If you haven't picked up your merch for Don't Waste Your Pretty, the tees, the V's, and the mugs are available on DemetriaLLucas.com. Also, the, the Ratchet and Respectable, their sweatshirts and hoodies, they're only available in smalls and extra smalls. But if you want black, then they're available on the website. The new merch comes in soon. While I was sitting here talking to you, a couple new designs came in. So I'm excited to, uh, to take a look. I'm so excited about this merch line. I can't wait to wear, like, my own shit. We'll talk again on Friday. Okay, bye. How do you hide a love affair when you're two big names in Hollywood? True Love is a new scripted podcast from Wondery that brings you stories of scandal, romance, and drama. And in the new season... Abby and Eric are co-stars in a new blockbuster superhero franchise. The last thing either of their careers need is an on-set romance, but they just can't help themselves. Abby and Eric bond over a shared suspicion that the movie they're in isn't very good. 
Their affair starts with a shared laugh. Then they exchange secret glances on set. Soon, their on-screen love scenes spill over into real life. But when Nigel, another co-star, enters the picture, this Hollywood romance gets complicated fast and a very messy affair ensues. Each season of True Love is passionate, scandalous, and inspired by a real-life love story. I loved season one of True Love, and I'm super excited for season two. I just started listening, and I'm already on my toes. If you like a good love triangle, then season two is for you. Follow True Love on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or listen early and ad-free by joining Wondery Plus in the Wondery app.